We're doing stuff and we're hanging out and chilling. It's, it was a workshop for Lenora, let's face it. Hey, Great Jay, concert. Chelsea. Great concert. Uh, so it was awesome there. And we're doing stuff there. And like they're showing us how to use a Surface Pro. It's like a workshop or a master class, if you will. Uh, okay. And um, so we go from we're making a song with her. And then we go to the other side of the big screen, if you're familiar with the store inside the Galleria. And it uh, looks just like the Apple Store, but it's all Microsoft. Yeah, stuff. basically. But I mean, I like Microsoft better. Shout oh, we know. I'm I'm getting to the point of how oh, you like ahead. Microsoft. <laughs> go so ahead. Go ahead. we go to the other side. Now, Surface Pros we were messing with on the other side of the screen. So we go to the other side where the concert's going on. So I go over there real quick and we get a seat in the front, and I'm not gonna take pictures like that. So it's like J Max right there, name dropping names, pick them up, bitches. <laughs> uh, like so, J Max right there, and then there's a seat next to him. I'm like, hey, anybody see? He's like, nah, good. I'm not gonna take pictures like that. So I was like, hey, Devon, like, you know what I'm saying? Take this seat. Put me in right. The I sure spot, did. Right. I never get that close. Best get a seat concert in the I house. I kept thinking, I'm like, how many videos am I on looking goofy like? Yeah, <laughs> but you you took some good videos. I did. I thought it was so. Great. So like we're right there, and then. I move. All of a sudden, I see somebody come sit crisscross applesauce next to him, and they yeah, you got to say it like that. Crisscross applesauce. Yeah, and they they put a Surface Pro right next to him. So the concert's going on a bit, and then they stop it and they go, "Yo, somebody has a Surface Pro." I'm jumping in, and we need to find it. I'm and in. here, yeah, Devon's can tell the story because it's in. him. I'm jumping in. <laughs> uh, when the gentleman sat crisscross applesauce next to me, and then he placed, like, he was sitting on the floor. Yeah. And I'm sitting at the table, and then he put the Surface tablet at the table yeah. right next to me. And I went, huh. I went back to the concert. Didn't think anything of Nothing. It, until that gentleman yeah. came out and stopped the concert and then said, excuse me, y'all. We're missing a Surface tablet. Mm. And I thought, there's no way. No way. That that's this Surface tablet. Can't be. That's right by Right me. next to him. Right by me. Also, just large black man in Black History Month in a black hoodie in the Microsoft store. If you know Devon, that nigga wears said, black I hoodies I wear all black the time. hoodies everywhere. Even and though so when it looking, was a Xavier University, it said XU on it. It said XU. Don't nobody know I, what I that know is. people are like, oh, that's yeah. a gang. But yeah. anyway, it's yeah. not. It's a great university. And... I immediately, I tried to do a lean. Like, I tried to still be sitting and lean, lean as far away from the tablet as I could while pointing at the tablet. Now, here's the, the problem. I know multiple people in that audience thought my man was trying to steal a Surface yeah. and just didn't pull it yeah. off. <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, dang, yeah. why'd you put the Surface yeah. tablet next to me? Yeah. And then the dude even, he pointed at it like, is this it right here? No, not yeah. is this it right here. You should have been like, this is the one I brought over here. Yeah. Don't. So, so now yeah. he looked like, and it was, a, it was a reading with a rapper event. It was. Uh, yeah. I so, asked him, uh, but I. But, oh, here we go. That's why I brought that up. What'd you do in the end? So when the show was over, I immediately walked over to Jaron and dapped him. And I have said hello to Jaron. Yeah. We at said least, hello to him 11 times. At least. Every time he walked times. by. But I said, I need to do this so the audience knows. Yeah. Hey, my man wasn't stealing. He knows this guy. He knows him. He goes, why you say? I was like, because it looked like I was stealing. He goes, it yeah, did. It did. It looked like you tried yeah. to steal a Surface. Lenora was like, yeah, it definitely looked like yeah. you tried to steal. Yep. Everybody's like, yeah, it looked like you tried to steal a Surface tablet. It did. From the Surface store. From the Surface First of store. First of all, and a black I head. would be much better at stealing. Come on. Stop I, incriminating I, 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 okay, yourself. Okay, okay. My bad. My stop bad, it. My bad. Jaron Small and, and uh, Lenora, friends of the show, they've been on. Uh, yeah, you can go and look at past interviews that we've done. Oh, we so, should put a link right there. We should put, yeah. Niggas tries to steal from, yeah. Look. <laughs> okay. Stealing. Okay. Stealing. Okay. That was stealing. Um, yeah, so um, obviously this is in my humble opinion podcast because you click the button, so you got to know what it is by now. Like, oh, you didn't do it? You didn't have an intro? Like, he was stealing because he was wearing a. No, I don't do that yet. Oh, gotta, oh okay. Like, okay. Okay. Do I? I do. Yeah, this is usually. The oh, point. I do. See, I be. I be okay, I, I'm gonna set you back up then, because I, I think I was. Uh, what was you I had wearing? on? I was wearing a black and ugly as a black hoodie, because black and ugly as ever, <laughs> ever stay used to down to my socks. 
It's, uh, what's my name again? Avery, like a very nice guy, also known as Carlton Banks. Carlton with a K, B A N triple X. Carlton with a K, B A N triple X. Uh, one half of the In My Humble Opinion podcast, along with my co host, my brother, the best writer I ever know. Shut up, boy. Only writer. The you best know. writer. Let me love you. Okay. Well, Let well, me I'm love still, my still brother. The only writer. I got you. Just Devon. Yeah. yeah. Just divine. <laughs> all right, all right. That's me. That's what it is. I write sometimes. Yeah, yeah. He's the best writer that I know. He's my hero, guys. He's my brother. You need to get better heroes. <laughs> this nigga doesn't know how to take a compliment. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Oh, my daddy listening. Mm. Our daddy. We have the same father. We have the same father. Okay. Somebody got offended by saying that. My bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, what it is. All right. Today, we have a, a, a very special guest today. Our, our guest today, I had a chance to actually meet last week at the event. She didn't know me from nobody, didn't know me from a can of paint, nah, nothing, whatever. But the way that she talked to me, just talking to a fan, she was cool as hell. Didn't know who I, she knew my brother, but didn't know me, but she was real personable. We talked for actually a minute, and d- dropping the same name again, J Mac was right there, and she was just like, all right, like, you talked to us, and he was right there, and she knows J Mac, but didn't like, oh yeah, whatever, nigga. You hey, what's hater. up? Hater. No, I like J Mac. I do too. I like him a lot. And he looks like he could beat us up. He uh, look like he on the radio. J Mac like on the radio up. sounds funny. J sitting next to J Mac, he looked like he was gonna he's whoop both our ass. Suplex us into this. I table. was like, damn. He was like, what's up? I was like, oh <laughs> shit. Like, oh, okay, and he had Jack. on the one deep chain. I was like, bruh. <laughs> okay. See now I'm gonna get my ass kicked. But anyway, <laughs> uh, she wasn't too fly to speak to us. It was cool as hell. She's Houston royalty and a Twitter legend. She's an inspiration to us all. She bet on herself and fought the good fight and left a great job in 2015 in order to pursue her God-given place on this earth as a singer. Yes, you can bet on yourself, people. Like, that's what she did. I mean, goodness. A lot of us are scared to do that, but she, she did it. She's been blackballed, discredited, unrecognized to being prominently featured on your TV and music festivals. I mean, really, everywhere. Where you ask? Well, I'm glad you ask. All right. She's been on a little show. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called uh, David Letterman, Late Show. She's also been on uh, NPR Tiny Desk, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, She sang the national anthem for the Houston Astros and the Texans. I'm going to go down some lists. I can't get every single one of them. So people in the comment sections, you're going to kill me because I I don't like we have to let her talk and I'm not going to sit here all day and do this like go down every single thing she's done uh, a few of the things she's done uh played uh at afro punk on the same stage as a few of my favorite bands bad brains living color cults of personality that's a jam all right south by southwest Are we uh, cleared for that one yes <laughs> it's, it's cm punk's theme song <laughs> look in my eyes i listen to it every day uh what's that new new newport folk festival acl austin city limits Houston Symphony. She's been featured on uh, Forbes, Vice. She's a three-time Houston Press Award recipient for the best female vocalist. She's been featured on numerous Houston classics, including Zero's High Hater and friend of the show, personal friend to Rob Gillette's The Lord Don't Like Ugly. That was terrible. I'm sorry. Favorite but I song. did it. That's his, yeah. Love my, it. my favorite song of yours is uh, After the Storm because we saw you live oh. and and yeah, what you yeah? I, the, he I'm, talks about the intro to After the Storm about all the yeah, time. I'm, Go ahead, that, that's a, that's a song I like. All right, uh, she's been described as a powerhouse vocalist with vibrant grooves. Okay, she's a model, singer, songwriter, entrepreneur, motivational speaker, community activist. Uh, TSU alum, yes, alum. She's enrolled and dropped out numerous times, as she said. All right. She's been on five of the seven continents, two, me and my brother's one. Uh, <laughs> she's also a board member of headcount.org. We'll get into that. And the lead singer of the eclectic Gulf Coast soul band, The Suffers, and just a positive person to be around. Cam Franklin, ladies and gentlemen. Cam Franklin, yay! All right. Nice intro. We've been trying to get you for a minute. I know. I'm the you're worst. One, you're one of the first. <laughs> you're not the worst. You're not the worst. You're not the worst. You were busy. I yeah. am very busy. Well. I appreciated the fact that when we'd be like, ah, nah, she just can't. We'd get an email like, hey, guys, 
Sorry. <laughs> this is where I was like, okay, well, at least yeah, she's still thinking. It was cool as She's well. still thinking about us, so it's cool. Aww, it's cool. Yeah. Such a so good we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Yeah, for I was real. like, when you get time. I was like, yo, you get time, you're hey, good. It is you're, it is. you're busy. We're not. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll make it around your schedule. I've never been on Jimmy Kimmel or anything <laughs> of that nature. I don't I sing neither. national anthems places. The Houston Texans. Have no idea who I am. Neither do the Astros. Yet. So yet, yeah. yet. <laughs> but I mean, I think that's See, a great thing when we're going positive. in about <laughs> your. <laughs> that's a great thing we're going in about your story because there was a point where what and you you really when you're talking about overcoming things like let's go all the way back because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we really want to make them sure to church. Yeah, all the way back, all, all the way, way back. back. So what part of Houston are you from? <sighs> so <laughs> that's a tough. Uh, Tough. Answer. Are you from Houston? I am from Houston. Mm-hmm. I was born in Bryan College okay. Station. All right. Okay. But I moved to Houston, I believe, when I was three, two or three. You're from Houston. I'm from Houston. Um, but my mom moved around a lot. So I grew up uh, initially South Park off of uh, Belfort Telephone Road area like near Hartman. I went to Cornelius and then moved okay. to... Acres Homes, and then went to, oh, oh, goodness, but it was a completely different experience, because Acres Acres Homes was the first time I'd actually uh, gone to school in a predominantly black school, because the school I went to at first was predominantly Hispanic. And so, you know, showing up, the homies ain't speaking Spanish. I'm like, what's what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Where is it? And then, you know, then hit being hit with all these other different things, like, oh, you you talk white or you talk like this, and I'm like, what does white sound like mm. exactly? <laughs> like, I, had no clue. like yeah. I don't know. But um, I, I eventually uh, went to Carver High School and then left and ended up graduating from Clear Creek High School in League City. Um, for my last three League years. City. I said I lived everywhere. <laughs> wow. wow. And then immediately after high school, because I hated it down there, I moved mm-hmm. back to, I mean, I really hated it down there. I moved back to uh, the city and um, enrolled at Texas Southern and had a <laughs> had a had a affair with Texas Southern where basically anytime I'd get the opportunity to go on the road or to just be anywhere that wasn't Houston, I would drop out of Texas Southern again and yeah. then be like, I'm kidding. I love you guys. I'm, yeah. I'm back. <laughs> it is and, what it is. And Texas uh, Southern will welcome you with open arms. Exactly. And, you know, I always appreciated them. Yeah. And, um, you know, I have intent to finish eventually, but on my own time, because it was definitely a time of my life where I wasn't going to Texas Southern for myself. I was going because that's what my parents wanted me to do. Wow. But... My mother worked at Southwest Airlines, and she still works at Southwest, but at the time, um, I was on her insurance. And so the only way that I could stay on my insurance was to stay enrolled in school. And so I was like, okay, well, I need that. And she's like, well, that's also how you can keep your flight benefits. And I was like, well, I definitely want those. (laughs) And so the first few years before I turned 25, I had the same flight benefits as an employee, so I could just go wherever I wanted to go. And so I would schedule these tours for myself, like a buddy pass tour and just me and my backpack, my CDR that had all my track, my beats on it. <laughs> Damn, and my, CDR? That was it. Yeah, this is early 2000s, yeah, so okay. mid-2000s. So yeah, CDR in 05 is normal, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but that's how I got my, my start, really. And uh-huh. then when I was back home in Houston, um, I would get on any stage. And I mean any stage so back then tuesdays and well like monday through wednesday was usually a mix of either going to the r&b jams that um mariam echo would sing out a lot and so she was one of my first like real vocal mentors when i was coming up and so we would sing together every tuesday at the spot called dean's but before black people actually liked dean's (laughs) back in the day and so it was (laughs) she and i um this guy named wasi and uh dom and i say you know black people but we were all these like you know just weirdos yeah, doing yeah. this different kind of music every night and uh the rock boys would show up and we would just jam and it was like this every week for about two years and i realized that even though i'd had my upbringing in the gospel church i wasn't 
I, I never really had that confidence that I needed to push through as a singer before mm. I started gigging because the church I grew up in, uh, which was Galilee Missionary Baptist Church and Greater Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church before that, every singer that taught me was the best singer I'd ever heard. Just amazing. And okay. so I always felt like, dang, I don't sound like them, or oh, I can't do these runs, mm. or oh, I'm not, you know. And so my brain started, you know, thinking that young because I just didn't have that mentorship. And then when I got to high school, my choral teachers that I had in Lake City were notorious for being not the healthiest teachers. <laughs> like they were, they were clean people, but I'm talking healthy as far as their emotional state. Okay. Like if okay. you made a mistake, they'd flip out. If you were out of tune, they'd flip out. If you wanted to do anything outside of choir, they'd flip out mm -hmm. because my tone wasn't a traditional tone. I would com you know, com get really combative with them because they thought that I was forcing uh, a vibrato on myself. And for folks that don't know what a vibrato is, that's the easiest thing that I compare it to is when Monica's first record for came out. Uh, uh, it's just one of them day. Yeah. And she, her yeah. mouth is doing the, hey, 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 hey. That, okay. that's a vibrato. So oh. if it's not, Vibrates. There, if if it's just straight, then it's a straight tone. However, if it's not natural, people think it's forced. And in opera, you know, that's something that a lot of singers learn. They're not born mm -hmm. with it. However, in gospel, a lot of folks have it. Yeah. And so a lot of black people have crazy vibratos, you know. And so I'm trying to explain this to them. They don't know this about me. They're telling <laughs> me that I'm doing all this stuff wrong. Uh, they convinced my mom to spend money on a vocal coach. She tells me that I just need to keep doing what I'm doing and that I need to continue practicing and working on my breathing techniques. But she's like, if that's not what you want to do, then don't do, do it. it. You can have another career in music that isn't opera and it isn't choral and you'll be just fine. But you have to work just as hard as you're working on this now on whatever it is that you want to do. And so okay. I went back to them, told them this. They weren't having it. And so it just created complex after complex after complex until I finally left school and just started gigging every night, mm. every single night. And so it would be R&B Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I would do all the experimental nights, uh, the weird shit at uh Natsuo, which is where Lizzo and I first met yeah. back when she was doing ellipses, and I was just trying to get in where I'd fit in. I'd usually sit in with uh, Free Radicals back then. Then yeah. Friday, Saturday, I'd usually link up with um, the punk rock and ska folks earlier in the evening, so like Los Garnales and um, Trenchtown Texans and Sound Patrol, and then later that night would be all the hip hop guys, and so. Uh, and then also super late on Wednesdays at Damage Control would also be okay. the hip hop stuff. And so Matt Zanzala gave me one of my earliest uh, internship opportunities mm -hmm. at KPFT at Damage Control. And so I would show up every week. And it's funny because so many, <laughs> so many rappers that I, I run into these days that yeah. used to come through all the time, they never remember me. <laughs> they think that uh, we never met before. Or the people that do remember me, they thought that I was like someone's girl. So oh. they just thought I was around. And I'm like, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. But that's that's pretty normal in this industry. A lot of times, if I don't lead with that just presence, mm. people assume that I'm just here. But also, you know, I've I've had to learn the hard way that the industry is still a very sexist place. So a lot of times people don't understand my role or they don't know that I'm in charge sometimes. So I've ha I've learned that it's not for me to explain all the time. You yeah. know, the che if the check comes to you, it comes to you. Okay. So yeah. That's <laughs> so a positive outlook. You'll drive yourself crazy worried about other people's thoughts of you. And, you know, I used to <laughs> have so many thoughts about other people's thoughts and then one day I was just like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. I really don't. And I went to, a good example is a few weeks ago, I went, or no, like two weeks ago, the Waxaholics had their eight year anniversary. They sure did. And this country band that uh, did this Hurricane Harvey event for me years ago, they're like, oh, where are you at? And I was like, 
oh, I'm at this, but then I'm going to this. So if you don't like hip hop or wor world music, because I really like the DJs that do the upstairs set <clears throat> on Thursday nights also, um, I said, don't come. Yeah. But they're like, well, shit, we just trying to party. So I bring six cowboys in there. <laughs> and it was just hilarious to see because, you know, people are like, what? Are you, what, what? I said, they want attendance here. Yeah. Yeah. The black people, white people, Mexican, Asian. You go to, the, to their events. That's what it is every time. You go to my events. That's what it is every time. I said, and if you ain't like minded, yeah. you know, I, I lead by trying to bring money to black business. And then after that, more money <laughs> to yeah, black yeah, business, yeah, yeah. even if it's through proxy. So I'm like, they asking me where to go. I could send them to somebody else's bar or restaurant. Or they can come here. But if they're telling me they want to have fun and I'm having yeah. fun, this is where I'm at, you yeah. know? So that's, that's the kind of like wave that I'm usually on because a lot of times it's, it's, just, it's just a very different thing. Like I, I've brought a lot of, a few years ago, same event. I brought uh, Cypher Sounds, uh, this DJ uh, from New York, and then Michael Che, who's we the, know who we Cypher know Cypher Sounds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I this DJ from New York. Well, he yeah. was actually doing uh, comedy that night, opening yeah. Yeah. for Michael Che, yeah. and so um, Mike and I had met a few years prior through Hannibal uh, Burris, Burris, but. Yeah. Like we were just drunk and didn't remember, and so this girl Dusty Rhodes, who's fr good friends of, with me, uh, was opening for Mike that night, and she was like, "Y'all should meet. I think you'll get along great." And so he offers me a shot of Bullet after his show is over. I'm like, "Okay, this is great." It's your drink, and uh, we should talk about why you should not more later, but. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I might not they got, love. They Bullet. got some. <laughs> they got some hate problems. I love them very much. What? I. This is a different conversation. I love okay, them very okay. much. I can just link okay. you to some stuff, and you can make a decision on your own. You know, when it's offered to me, still. God dang it! It's not something that if someone's presented it to me, I'm gonna stop drinking it. You know, but at the time, if I have a choice between that and something else, recently I've been making a different choice. I feel that because they how they've been treating uh, their own family members. They have a. I believe it's a niece or a cousin, somebody in the in the in that family who uh, came out as a lesbian and it became a whole oh, big thing. Really? And I'm like, we we've come too far. You know, we've come you... too far. If you got a gay cousin or family member, you gotta just that's your that's your family. That's, Everybody, that's a little, in my opinion, everybody's a little gay, but people don't want to have that conversation. <laughs> and, and her humble opinion, but we're yeah. it. <laughs> everybody's a little gay, and that's yeah. fine. You, know, yeah. you just make a decision on what it is you like every night. Eventually, now yeah. we jump yeah. forward because we just jumped ahead. Yeah, I'm a Gemini. Sorry. No, I'm like, saying oh. we jumped ahead to where you are, <laughs> but I mean it does give a nice little overview. Of, like I like the fact that you are like I'm going to be unapologetically me. Mm -hmm. But even in like all the writings and research we've done, you're like it took some time to get to that point. But oh, you're constantly standing up for other people in the face of like this could cost me money, but I don't care. This could uh, they could cost me stuff in the industry, but I don't care. It so. always brings yes, it costs you money. It but I and I do care because I like money. I like yeah. being secure. I don't want to go back. To that's my a, old life ever. How, that's a nice jacket. Thank you. Like thank money. you. <laughs> no, th this was sent to me because I like money. Yeah. Oh, I, yes. I'm not paying for anything. I'm an advertisement and I'm an artist. So, my goodness. you know, it's. I feel like you, you need to find partners. That's what I was saying, that if champion's what you want for your body, you manifest it. I, I knew champion. that I wanted a clothing partner that was representative of my yeah. Uh, yeah. personality. And so... Um, that's what this, this was Mod Cloth, a campaign I did with them a few years ago. This oh, yeah, Mod Soul, Cloth, yeah. Uh, a local uh, um, stylist that I work with sometimes. Yeah. And yeah, you know, just a little bit of everything. My my face is sponsored, my lashes, my brows. Man, I want to Beauty get sponsors, because I, you know, I uh, shout out to Teresa. She I heard a bison boutique. sponsor us. <laughs> it's a beard it's well, a I think you know you guys should make a, a mood board of what you guys want for yourselves and your your journey yeah. together as a as a business, and um, you know start crossing them off when they happen and celebrate awesome. those That's wins. Yeah. Now going back again, though, your singing was was the plan to ever be with the band? Was the plan to be solo? Uh, I was always the plan saw to even just be a band. singer? Okay, so you always saw yourself now, as a band. I don't know if I necessarily saw myself as like a band, but I always saw myself singing with a band. Because y'all are a 
band. We are a band. Y'all yeah. are a band. We, we got a brass the, section. We went to the uh, <laughs> the 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 Suffers and the Tauntaun show. Yeah. Oh, and my people. Yeah, yeah the y'all are yeah. a band. Yeah. So, like, oh, the album release. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, was, that was that was what that was for. I said, yeah, yeah we'll definitely be there. Oh man, that was a great night. With, and I love my band so much because. <laughs> <laughs> they they stood with me when I told them that we were going to learn All My Life by Casey and JoJo. I said, <laughs> we're going to learn it, and it's going to sound great. Really? And so that ended up being the closing song that, that both yeah. nights. Oh, we y'all just learned that? We had just. Okay, look, that was great. <laughs> that was great. It was That was best, great. And just for them to learn so that. And unexpected. Like, I was like, oh, it okay. It was so fun. I, like, I know it was this so, one. Well, I had nine singers with me. I had. Yes. I was like, I can't do this song by myself. Like, this is not a by myself myself Mm-mm. we can't ever justify doing this again <laughs> and me not losing my voice the way that you know it, it would happen and so all them singers i'm like jack jack shout out to jack freeman and zamaji i'm like i need y'all to be casey on every <laughs> empty part so anytime yeah. you hear an empty space that's your time to do ah! You know, <laughs> knocked it out, Jack Freeman, friend of the oh show. Oh my gosh, hey, I, I love all of them, man. Mm-hmm. They're just so how amazing. You, how do you even meet the Suffers? How did I meet them? Or were y'all the Suffers when y'all met? I we mean, were not the Suffers like, when yeah. we met because, um, you know, I, I, I really do believe in God putting you in positions that uh, you're supposed to eventually end up in. And if you don't believe in God, I believe in the universe doing that mm-hmm. for you. Um, I first met. Uh, the first sector of the band <laughs> when I was skipping school in high school to gig. And okay. the, my senior year of high school was so wild because the, the choral teachers that I was getting in, getting into it with um, just didn't understand that I had made a decision. I was like, I'm going to be a rock and roll singer. I'm going to be a Tina Turner. I'm going to get at this bitch, and I'm not going to talk to y'all no more. Okay. And they were just like, "That's you're not, that's not how this yeah. works. I said... I read what is required of me to graduate. I missed a stipulation because they had changed the rule to where <laughs> if I had, I missed too many days of school, so I wasn't allowed to walk. Uh, They'll catch you on that one. They'll but, catch you on that yeah, one Some like 60 something days, but Man. whatever. Uh, just, just, whatever. Just a little bit, just a little bit. But you know what? Almost every single person, including the Tauntauns who I met at that same time, um, that I worked with back then, I eventually worked with later on in my career. Mm-hmm. And um, during that time, that's when I initially met members of Los Garnales. And mm. Los Garnales is one of those bands that has been around forever yes. in Houston. Um, for folks that are not familiar, they're a punk ska band that does a lot of the music in Spanish, but they incorporate uh, reggae and Mm -hmm. uh, jazz and rock and roll, and it's just a really fun uh, time. But they would let me sit in. And to be able to sit in with bands that had that kind of a draw locally meant so Mm -hmm. much to me because back (laughs) back in the day when I was little, you know, now we are way more aware of what we let kids watch and what we don't let them watch. But I grew up in the generation of you don't know what the hell I watched because you left the VHS tapes there. Uh-huh. And so my favorite videos that we had when I was a kid, even though I was like not, way too young to be watching them, was What's Love Got to Do With It and yeah. The Five Heartbeats. And I watched them maybe once, twice a day. And... I more so watched because I was convinced that they were giving me a formula. Okay. okay. And they, but they did. They did. Yeah. They absolutely. did. Robert Townsend gave me a formula. Yeah. Tina Turner gave me a formula. Mm-hmm. I was so I I was convinced, and anybody that's seen what's love got to do with it, I was like, I want to learn how to sing like every man that can sing for longer than two hours. Mm. And Felipe was the first dude that I met in Houston that was playing two hour shows with Los Garnales and his the his show was just very well put together yeah. just different suit every time yeah. very dramatic introductions just just everything you know yeah. and I'm like okay presentation presentation and then for me you know 
I felt this pressure once Destiny's Child took off, which to an a- to an average person that sounds crazy. Like, why are you gonna get feel pressure <laughs> when Destiny's Child takes off? Yeah. Because in my mind, I'm a singer. I'm from Houston. Brandy and Monica popped off at 14 or 15. Yeah. I'm up 12. I'm like, ah. Oh, so you're man. like, I'm already I'm like, behind the ball. What is this? No, no, no. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> oh, they know White Clef. Fuck, Back I'm behind. Then, yeah, golly. Because I'm crazy. But, yeah. you know, some might say crazy. Some might say innovative. I don't know. But the thing is, is that it was an expectation that I had in my mind that I was behind because I had no one around telling me. There's no timetable on when success occurs. No. And I had no one telling me that when it's your time, it's your time yet. Mm. And so I'm over here trying to tell my mom, I got to move to L.A. You know, And she's like, if you don't take your ID to move to L.A., <laughs> yeah. but back to your room and whatever, because I think I was 12. So <laughs> yeah. um, th- that wasn't that wasn't happening. But um, years later, when I was in high school and I read all these books and I've watched all these films about how to make this work and at that time MTV Diary which I wished so badly they would bring back because that was like the pinnacle of me being in high school and watching you know not just Destiny's Child but uh, Britney Spears and J-Lo and Usher talk about how hard the road was Mm. how they needed to take care of themselves I'm at home writing down notes okay all right, because I know I'm about to be on the road. Yeah, I'm going. My mom don't get it. It's like I don't have the music yet, so I was writing every day because I knew it was coming. Because all they would, the only consistent thing that I heard back then was, you can't prepare yourself for the wave. Mm. Once it comes, you just you gone. Just ride it, or you yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. All, uh, all of them have that in common. Yeah. yeah, and so even now, like I try to make sure that I'm always focused. Maybe not so much because it can be very consuming. Um, But at the same time, when I'm creating at a mass rate or if I'm finishing tasks, like back to back to back to back to back to back to back, I bask in it because I look at it all as a gift because I know some people are not that organized. Some people are not that productive. Some people don't get those ideas like that. And I just look at it as, damn, like these are all these blessings that I used to ask for. Because I had years where the songs weren't coming like that. I had songs where I didn't understand why I wasn't getting to where I needed to be. Or, excuse me, not songs. Years where I didn't understand why I wasn't getting to where I used to be. Years where I had to learn to support all of my friends. Because feeling left out, feeling jealous, feeling whatever. Hmm. Like, that's not that's not productive because that's not for you. Now, if there are certain things, achievements that you want to attain... There are ways to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times it's not what you think that's holding you back that's actually holding you back. Hmm. And so, like, one thing that I had to, like, really, really work on uh, recently, and this has been, like, a work, like, I'd say a work in progress over the last three years, is trusting and knowing that those little parts of all those films where you had those little snakes, that they don't win. They mm. never win in okay. any of those movies. They never win. When the artist continues to keep going, when you stop, they always win. You see them with the stacks, and it would be so easy to quit sometimes. Yeah. But every year that I don't quit, every time I write another song, every time I make it through a part of a production or an idea or whatever, a collaboration that might have been a little tough, I'm just like, fuck yes, I yeah. did it again, bitch. You know, like, <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's such small victory sometimes because when you're comparing yourself to Mount Everest, I, that's what I call Beyonce now. You know, okay. the, the I call any artist Everest, that yeah. has made it to a peak where you can control everything without worry about the budget. That's mm. what I call Everest. Oh yeah. Now, when you talk to them, I'm sure that they have the things that they're trying to excel to. And so in my mind, I'm like, I don't want to compare myself to any artist because no artist has been everywhere that I've been and their journey is their journey. You know what? Maybe there's certain things that I want for myself in a different kind of way. Like I need to figure out how I want that. So one one big thing that I've been focused on recently is I want to participate in more symposiums. I want to do more long form speaking engagements. I want to do um, 
more applications for big grants so that I can do uh, the larger art projects and uh, music performance pieces that I have mm -hmm. in, in my vault that are just there rather than uh, depending on money that's never going to come from just my own just sitting on my ass. Yeah. So it's like if there's a grant out there waiting for an idea that I think is that good, why don't I propose it to someone that's actually asking to hear about that rather than to someone that's just going to shit on me and my ideas? Yeah. And so once I started seeking out people that weren't only like minded, but like minded and deep with pockets to help fulfill these visions that I had, because that's not the type of people that they are. There are people out there that all they do is make money and they want to contribute to artists. Yeah. They want to contribute to that. But because people are so focused on the wrong shit, we forget that that's a gener generational wealth that does that, that type of philanthropy, that's never gonna go away either. No. Yeah. But it's just finding those people, making those relationships, and keeping it moving. Now how do you maintain, like we're talking about, like you said, y'all are a band, y'all are a huge band, y'all seem to have a pretty distinct, I don't wanna say distinct, y'all move as a band, y'all move as a team. That's a lot of people to kind of get in line. Yeah. Um, How do y'all make that? I mean, it's a lot. I mean, well, guys, when we tell y'all, it's a lot of it. Y'all are a band. Like, y'all are a full-on band. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, it's not oh, five people. Four. Yeah. Like, yeah. How, how many people are in the suffers? <laughs> so, like the Wu-Tang. Yeah. When we started, there were 10 people. There are seven people now, mm -hmm. full-time. Um, six of the original members. Uh, we just had a, another woman join recently, Juliet Terrell, on bass, who is incredible. Um, however, to answer your question, uh, I feel that being in a band, any any size band, be it a band of two or more, um, takes just as much work as a healthy relationship. So, and and it takes just as much wrangling and work and love as if you were to go on a family trip with like <laughs> six cousins. And I know that some people don't have families that big. Some people have families that are bigger than that, like me. My first cousins growing up, I think there were, I don't even know how many, I think 15 of us. So when we all got together, it was like gang, 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 you know, like <laughs> I've just, yeah. that's my first band was nine people. Yeah. The smallest band I've ever been in was uh, four people. Um, and that was, <laughs> it was very light. Uh, but at the same time, I always missed the other elements. And I grew up in a house where we listened to big band music. So your Earth, Wind and Fire, okay. Shaka Khan and no Rufus. But beyond that, traditional jazz. Mm -hmm. And it was just what I loved. And again, watching all those movies. And then when having the, what was it, the... The Temptations biopic come out, you know, that became a part of the the same like cycle. Yeah. And I and no matter how long it was, I'm watching it, trying to figure all this stuff out and figure out like, okay, I gotta make sure that if I start trying to mess around with a little bit of some, you know, D R U G S, I need to make sure <laughs> that I keep my shit together. That's true. Because you can't you can't do that uh, and yeah. maintain a career. Yeah. And if you do, you better be careful. Like that's not for me. So I learned I can do I can do some weed, I can do a little mushrooms every now and then, and talk to Jesus and drink water. Like those are that's my happy lane. That's yeah. as far out as that's, you go. That, yeah. But that's my personal yeah. limit. Um, for us to maintain as a unit, we have to talk to each other. Hmm. We have to hang out with each other. We have to follow up with hanging out on each other, uh, with, with each other on each other, whatever. Um, and doing it all the time mm -hmm. and making sure that it's consistent. Yeah. Um, I, I tell folks that because we've been together so long, June makes nine years of the suffers. Yeah. Um, when we're not around each other for long periods of time, we get sad. And the funny thing is, is that it's the other way around too. If we're gone too long from home, we get bummed out. So it's like you got to find that medium that makes sense. One of my uh, first mentors when I first started touring told me, uh, you can't be on the road that long. And I said, what do you mean I can't be on the road that long? I feel great. 
and his <laughs> his name is uh, Jim James, and he sings for this band called My Morning Jacket, and they've been touring forever, like oh, twenty yeah. something years. Yeah, My Morning and Jacket. He tells course. me, he and says, "I know you road. feel, yeah." He's like, "I know you feel good right now, but after six months of doing this, you'll be lucky if y'all are still together." Oof. And mm. so six months later, <laughs> we only lost one person. So, mm, but no, actually, <laughs> uh, you know, I spoke to my agent immediately after having that conversation with him. And um, by the end of the summer, I I was ran ragged. I was just like, oh, my God, we made it through. But why did we do this? So to give people perspective and you can look at our first what was that? 2015, our first year of touring. The routing was insane. Y'all but went everywhere. Everywhere yeah. and in directions that didn't make any sense for ah. us to get to Newport Folk Festival. And they were all important gigs. Yeah. And there's all, once you, again, once you get on the wave, they're all important. Yes. You know? Yes. So we, I remember <laughs> we started in Boise, Idaho, drove to Pemberton Festival, which was north of Vancouver. So that's like, 10 hours Golly. and you're crossing the Canadian border and yeah. on the west side of Canada they they just fuck with you a little more <laughs> especially if you're a musician everybody knows that um, and so you add another two hours to that then you come back in we had to play uh, a show in Jackson Idaho I think not Jackson Victor Idaho which was about two hours north of uh, Salt Lake City drove to Salt Lake immediately after the show flew to Newport Folk Festival to make it that next day. We're thinking everything's groovy, everything's fine. Newport Folk Festival is in Newport, Rhode Island, by the way. Uh, and then our uh, keyboard player breaks his arm because he falls downstairs that morning. Oh. And then we had to play the rest of that tour without him. And, you know, it, it was one of these things that when I think back, I'm like, how did it happen? Yeah. How did it happen? How did we do this? How You know, but it, but at the same time, it's like being able to do this is such a gift, but you don't want to abuse it. Yeah. You don't want to abuse And that includes yeah. abusing yourself. And like right now, um, we're working on this record and it's been work, like work in a way that we've never worked before. Um, last year, the two founding members of the band left the band for different different reasons. Everybody's still Gucci, but... Um, as we've moved on to working on this new album, um, we've had to get to know what we sound like without them. Mm, really? And yeah, and so it's been a very fun and exploratory time because we sound great. You know, that's we good. and it's and and that's not to say that we sound great because we're not they're not in the band. That's that's not what I'm saying. But I feel like they did such a great job of building a legacy of sound to where us moving on now you're not going to lose that it's mm. just mm. We, we have this in our toolkit now and now we're bringing all this other shit in to put into the box too so it's it's been such a fun time working on this record but um i get really bad when i'm working on albums to where i don't like to leave the house and I don't like. I'm like I, my friends trying to hang. I'm like I don't want to. I want to finish this. <laughs> yeah. But in then the zone, I. Yeah. But then I have to be realistic and know that like I can't finish the album in a day. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. been work for me to just get out the house the last two weeks. And because right now um, we just finished uh, recording a, a chunk of songs, and so before I get ready to do the background vocal sessions, I'm working on all of the arrangements for that right now, and so. Uh, Oof, that's work it's work and i'm so particular with how i like things to be yeah. and arrangement i arrangement is key yeah and i'm very proud of the arrangement um it's just i want to make sure that the singers when i bring them in uh just feel empowered to just be ready to go yeah. okay. um and so i've been making it complicated and fun but to where when we learn it it's not going to be as painful as it was for me to create it. <laughs> That's good, though. <laughs> now, when did you start to feel like when we're going back? Is now you guys are working on this this album. Uh, you had a lot of success with the last album. When did you guys start to feel like okay, this suffers thing is like this is working? Like <laughs> this is like where like what was the first moment where you're like, all right, 
Ooh. Um, I would say after the after the first tour. Like once we survived the first tour. So it was the, the whole first, first tour. You're really? still like, I, I, don't I just know. kept, I kept <laughs> feeling like, well, I mean, the band was doing fine as a band, yeah, yeah. But I didn't know if we would be able to hang because so many people told me we wouldn't. Mm. So when you have a whole group of folks telling you what you can't do, you know, it's really hard to go against the grain and and push through to do it. Yeah, yeah you gonna go on to it, all them niggas, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself. Aretha, you know, did it. I mean, it's incredible because it. yeah. all these other people did it. Like, what makes me? But that is the thing. That's probably the number. You know, like there's how they so even many. get paid. There's yeah. so many people, and there's da 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 da. But it's like the we come from a not not we like I'm not a singer, but the big band thing is not a new thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like what, the, a lot of the stars that we really like that are like these classic legendary mm-hmm. artists, like. They toured with the band, and so oh, you look at James Brown, or mm-hmm. you look at these people. That's like not only they tour with band, people from the band would leave and make their own iconic yeah. bands, yeah. and <laughs> come yeah. back in and out. Shout out so, to Fred Wesley. Yes, yes, so it's like that's one of those things. But like, how is that now? Because there, that's not necessarily the music model nowadays. Like, it's a new model where it's just like, hey, I like to record in my living room, drop the album, be yep. out, done. Like, that's, that's it. it. And the money's not there and da-da-da-da-da. And it's like you guys are, are, are doing something that's a whole lot different, and it's working. <sighs> a lot can happen when you stop talking to people that haven't gone where you're trying to go. Mm-hmm. The first person, and it's, it's that same year, um, the first person that I remember speaking to that had done what we do that gave us really useful advice was Lionel Richie. We opened for him in Austin a few years ago and he said, don't let anybody break y'all up. He's like, you mm. can, he's like, they're gonna try to make you go solo. They're gonna try to get rid of the band, the horns. Listen to Lionel, like, wasn't he in the Commodores? <laughs> hey, man, like it, but he's like, don't make my mistakes, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, well, he talked about yeah. how before the Commodores, how they were trying to kick him out the band. Really? The lady said before the com- like before the Commodores broke, they were trying to kick everybody out the band for different whatever the label uh, could do to make it smaller that's what they wanted to do that's ridiculous. and he said that i know it might not make sense some days but if y'all can figure this out you'll be just fine and hmm. so i'm like who the hell am i to not <laughs> listen to the man that owns half say. a rodeo drive that's true that's about you to know say. yeah so yeah you know, sometimes it is crazy sometimes it is hard sometimes it's everything and then some but then i think about all the other things that i've read or heard about that were hard and how they turned out and then i'm like girl if you don't get back to work and (laughs) i'm like let me smoke a joint eat a cookie and go back to work because sometimes you just need to hear yourself complain for a second yeah and then get back to work because every time i just do the work everything turns out fine when okay. I when I complain or I'm on Instagram and I get into one of them the wormholes people <laughs> be allowing themselves to get into, you know, it's like those those are three hours that I could have spent working on my creative resume. Those are three hours that I could have spent uh, working on a grand idea. Those are three hours that I could have spent, you know, working on myself, working out, singing, whatever. But here I am trying to compare myself to what if an algorithm that's being forced into my face. Yeah. Then I had to realize, oh, this is being pushed to to me. Because I'm successful too, because I work hard too. Yeah. So if I work on my content, if that's what I want to showcase, cool, do that. Or build a vault, and then when you're ready to really, really do this, it's just boom, ready to go, boom, ready to go, boom, ready to go. And I don't feel so freaking stressed out. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that's dope. Figured it out. That's some great advice. I haven't figured it out, but I'm figuring it out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you do have those keys to success, and you you follow them. I mean, I these are all bi- like basic things. You know, it's just working hard, stick, sticking with it. Um, staying not, around positive people. Staying around positive people, not being afa- afraid to fail. Um, yeah. Working on my own personal attitude. Yeah. And acknowledging that as a leader, um, sometimes... 
you're not right. Sometimes you're the dumb per- dumbest person in the room. Mm. But <laughs> if you're the right leader, that means you, everyone around you is smarter and better. And tr- or trying to get better and trying to encourage you to be better every day. And like it's something I talk about with my management team all the time who they they also manage uh, Tank of the Bangas and Big Frida. And it's, it's just positive energy all the time. And it's always, OK, tomorrow we're going to do better. Mm-hmm. Every day we're going to get better. Every day we're going to do better. And in my brain, I'm like, why not? You know, yeah. it, if it's up to me to make a decision to do better okay, great, you know? And when I when I think back on a lot of the songs that really inspired me to do that, I'm like, dang, now I am in a position to empower someone else to do that in my music. And so like, I, every time I think about encouraging songs, I always think about that, uh, that Nas song that I know I can yeah. and how much it used to play on the radio. But it was hitting me like that. I'm like, yep, here I go. Here I go. You know, same thing with when Carter II came out, Hustler Music. Every yeah. single day, my boyfriend at the time was bla- that that <laughs> in the morning, belly at night, every day. But at the same time, you know, every time. <laughs> belly at night. Oh, uh, God. I sold my soul to the devil. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, God. I can't. I can't. Twice I deep. can't. It's 2 o'clock and I'm just about to hit the street. Oh, my <laughs> Then we all live it, but yeah, I understand. Yeah, so, but I I felt like that era of of Lil Wayne to me was just as uh, important as when Formation came out by yeah. Beyonce. Like it was just focus, 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 focus. Okay, I see it, I want it. Like okay, great, I work till I own it. Like yeah. okay, great, that's that's what it is. And I know that I know so many people that live in these endless wormholes of negativity i know that other people also not other people some people have just card stacked it just sucks life sucks for them sometimes and it's you know unfortunate but because i'm in this situation and i'm able to make these changes where i'm able to make them Mm -hmm. i try to take advantage of that because the person that comes after me might not be able to do that or i try to be wild the way that i'm wild sometimes so that it's easier for the the black girl that wants to talk crazy after me and i will say too even um uh like the work you did with amy like the the you fed up uh, a lot of the speaking that that you do is inspiring especially in particular for houston there's a number of things like i've seen you speak on where it's just like these are the things you need to do and it's empowering coming from you because it's like look i do a different type of music I'm releasing it in a different type of way. Like I'm in this big band. Like I'm going against odds that you say can't be yeah. done, and I'm doing it. So a black uh, woman, I think it's man. really interesting too. When I mean, you know what people will say about Houston? Like, yeah, oh, you can't do it. You can't do this. Always. Can't do that. Can't do that. Always. But then, you know, I, I, you know, like we were always pointing out. Like I'm like Houston artists have been number one for like the top two, three summers. Yeah. You've got like a lot of the top artists that are coming out here. A number of things are happening here, and it's just like these. It's people hard. Are. It's Houston is hard, and it's a very. It's always been a hard market mm-hmm. to break into if you don't have the relationship. The relationship is, and I will reiterate, is very hard to break into because if you're not in that that circle, mm-hmm. sometimes people don't want fuck with you. If they had no role in your success. Sometimes people don't want to fuck with you. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Some sometimes they're just assholes. Because even in your bio, you, yeah. you, I mean, you've talked about like man, having difficulty early on. Yeah. I had man, I had difficulty like two days ago. You know, <laughs> like it's there's people. Yeah, we, we, that, we saw your Twitter. Oh my gosh! Like it's just, and it and it takes a lot for me sometimes not to just call people out. Mm-hmm. Because there are a lot of people's faves out here that be acting all kinds of crazy and speaking disrespectfully to other artists. But the thing is, is that I can't worry about them. Mm-hmm. I can't allow them to consume me or to make me uh, another level of angry yeah. because it's not going to get me to where it is that I'm trying to go. And so, you know, when it comes to just <laughs> I, I got I got I'm like, I can't even worry about them when it comes to defending artists in Houston. Um, 
I'll, I'll say this. I watched a Reba McIntyre masterclass recently okay. on maintaining a career in country music. And I felt like her statement on country music applies to all music. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to industry cities, New York, Nashville, LA, if we're talking hip hop, uh, Atlanta would be thrown in the mix and so would Houston and New Orleans. You don't have to live in any of these places to be a successful artist. You, you, you don't. Um, however, you do have to do business in those mm -hmm. cities eventually mm -hmm. to get what it is that you need because the people that are going to run your worldwide distribution might not live in your city. The people that are going to get you the sync licensing that you deserve, they might not live in your city. Mm. And with that in mind, you know, those aren't the only two things that make the music uh, world go around. But at the same time, I feel like feeling like you have to be in one of those big cities to be s successful. Like that's nonsense. Will it be easier to build relationships and to meet people that are directly involved with what it is that you do that do it live it eat it breathe it every day mm -hmm. hell yeah and some people need that but if you're okay with working wherever it is you work do that yeah. i live here because i like it here i do a lot of business not here but it's nice to come home and i mean the other thing too is it's kind of like what we were talking about before the show started you're were part of that generation this last generation of in terms of how we deal with the internet. Mm -hmm. And so this makes things a lot different where I'm like, yeah, you you can be other places now yeah. and still be able to like amass an audience oh, just yeah. using your phone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that, yeah, you're right. When it comes time to doing business, there are people that live in like certain areas where it's like, hey, you know, these people are in New York, these people are in Atlanta, these people are in Los Angeles, these people are in hopefully Houston. Y'all all moving down here, like move down here. California is yeah. people live in Houston now, so they just come down here. It is so cheap to live. Not anymore, but uh, <laughs> it's still yeah. cheaper to live than ever. I think you were at one of the Hugh Fed ups. I remember you were saying like the struggle. I'm not trying to downplay the struggle of a Houston artist, but mm -hmm. she's just <laughs> you were saying you can be here in Houston and be struggling and have like a nice apartment, a front yeah. yard. <laughs> I was like, right, yeah. like it, it, I said it is a different type of thing, and it's one of those things where you have to kind of go and experience other cities to see like how other people are living and it's like yo it's not to say that mm -hmm. oh your life is not hard or your life is not easy or anything like that but it's like yo like sometimes you get some benefits in your city that you don't even really understand like yeah you could be in a high rise and just not really even making that much money here houston not that much money but i mean houston it's got some cushion in some areas yeah i'd rather now, struggle in houston than lake charles <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, Lake Charles fan base. I love I'm the Golden Nugget. I'm a big nugget. fan of Lake you Charles. Love where? The, the, golden the Golden Nugget. Oh, the Golden Nugget, yeah. Golden Nugget. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I was laughs> like, okay. no, no, no. Look, I remember teaching, and it was like I, w I would be teaching back and forth from New Orleans, like dealing with like little uh, mentorship there, and then I came down here, and it's just different. Like you're talking to the kids, and you're like, it's rough out here. And then after Katrina came, I had students that would come down here, and they were moving to areas where my new students were, and they were like, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, once I got here, what? They're like, yo, what's going on over here? And it's like, you just don't even understand. They're like, just, I mean, they're just different positives and negatives to your city. There's just different differences yeah. to your city that you don't even understand. Like, mm -hmm. that's just how it is. Speaking of Katrina, how did Katrina affect you? Katrina. I think man. Katrina made me better. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I met so many musicians from New Orleans yeah. that were gigging here and trying to find gigs here and a lot that stayed here. And then it only made me more interested in going to New Orleans when it finally got rebuilt. And so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the the first time I went to New Orleans, actually, I was to see Lionel Richie right that, wow. that summer before Katrina at mm. Essence. And that was the only Essence I've ever been to. Um, because in my mind, I'm like, I don't, like I need to be working Essence. Yeah, like I don't want to just go to Essence uh, and speak it into existence. But but that's but I, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, and so I'm doing the work that I need to do so that I can go. And it's not because um, I'm not there yet. 
but it's because Essence happens during one of the most busy touring seasons, uh, uh, you know, of the year. And so it's like if I, if I don't get the invitation, I got to get my money somewhere else that summer. Yeah. So it'll come eventually. Now, what's it also like? I mean, being in these different genres, uh, you spoke earlier about, I mean, just kind of taking it back, switching schools. Mm-hmm. Thinking mm-hmm. like, hey, I get here and this is the first time I'm realizing like, oh, talking white and da 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 like we're from Sugar Land. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it is a thing where, <laughs> yeah, and we know. lived in Alaska and we moved around and it's like, you are getting exposed. What part of Alaska? Anchorage. Anchorage. Okay. Anchorage is I've, great. Only part. two places, Anchorage or Juneau. You ain't going to live in Fairbanks. Oh, I, I went to Fairbanks. 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 A few oh, times. Yeah. Fairbanks. It's, a, it's not much, but I liked it. Yeah. Anchorage, not is a, much Anchorage, Anchorage is a better city. <laughs> I want to Fairbanks is trash. No, I'm, no. I'm starting to start Fairbanks. Anchorage, Anchorage got, beef like Dallas, do. Houston. Oh, gosh. <laughs> they got, what's his name? Joker the Bell Bondsman. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. I just want to go because it's so beautiful. It's not it so is. much. It's great. It's not so much it's about empty. like what to do because like I love not being Bobby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's a different type of green. First of all, Alaska, oh, yeah. Alaska is the spot to move to. If you, that's, It's just a state full of people that don't oh, want to I've, be bothered. I've been to Alaska twice, and yeah. I had great times both times. Yeah. So yeah. I was sad because I thought I was going to actually be doing a show there this month, but it just didn't uh-huh. pan out the way that Oh, thought, man. So. Oh, there's no sales tax back. there. Everything is like, if it says 99 cents, it's 99, it's 99 cents. 99 cents. And they're starting to get people to come up there. Stack when we bread. were there, the first concert. Oh, the first concert we ever <laughs> went to? It was MC, MC Hammer, Hammer, TLC, and Boys, Boys to Men. Oh, and TLC. TLC was like, nah, fam. TLC not did not show. And yeah. that's what I think that's why we went. I'm gonna be honest. I was like, yo, I'm trying to see TLC. TLC and MC Hammer. I wanted TLC and MC Hammer. I wasn't really like I like funny. Boys to Men. I like Boys Most to Men. I'm Philly. enjoying their comeback right I, now. I, yeah. I, I, but I'm just saying, at the time, I was like, yo, if I got TLC was Motown hot. Motown like back hot. again. All of them was hot. That's an all star cast. I understand. MC Hammer. Yeah. Too legit to quit. Tore, he toured with all of them people. It I don't know their awesome. names, but I just remember the I dude with the hair. Dude with the motor oil. <laughs> I was yes, like, yo, my dude is out here. But you do a different. Awesome. <laughs> this is a, a, a. I don't even know why I got off my question. You do a different genre of music. You're very pro black. Mm-hmm. You always speak on black issues. You're always supporting black. But you also do a music. That isn't always ingratiated to current African American radio because it's still based on black music. Yeah, but it is a thing where it's like, yeah, you know, current African American radio is. Say it. Come Can on, we go there. Come on, sister. say it. Get it out. It's say your it. humble opinion. You might, you might be it's saying uh, what we this is current, all opinions. Current black radio, in my opinion, is very limited. Limited is a great and word. It's it's. You know, it, it's like any other radio to where they go with what's hot and what's popping. But I remember the day Truth Hurts came out okay. and putting on my my Twitter, if you go back, my homegirl wrote a hit today. This is amazing. Okay. And then not hearing it on radio until almost two and a half years later. Oh, my goodness. And, now hearing, so and now hearing Good As Hell drop and now hearing all this other stuff drop. The thing is, is that... The first record by the Suffers and the second record by the Suffers, well, not the second record, the first record for the Suffers was not meant for radio. Mm-hmm. It was meant for us. And then when we got on Letterman, we had to release it faster oh, okay. because you don't go on one of those shows unless you have something to promote. Yeah. yeah. So we dropped an EP. Well, had a great year after that. Time to drop the record. Great. Record does well cool gotta stay on the road some more to keep making that money so start working on the second record put the second record out second record does great on black radio not in houston mm. everywhere else mm. <laughs> but you know i i send my love to all the radio stations in houston because just because my music isn't played doesn't mean that it's not necessarily good it just means that it's not the right time yeah and yeah. so with that in mind I don't worry about what people are ready for right now because I seek out to make timeless art. Sometimes it might seem dated, but then you see things repeated. Right now we're starting to see tons of that repeated in R&B. And then I have a feeling that by the time everybody catches up, <laughs> they'll be like, "Oh, we're yeah, already here." You're right. Yeah, because I'll be real like, "Hey, R&B everybody, is, yeah. we're here. Um, we've been here." Exactly, been here. and. That's been the case with almost every single one of my friends that I've seen climb up from her, Karungbin. You know, it's like, okay, 
I just need to stay focused on myself. The funny thing was is oh, that. Oh, wait, say their name again. Uh, Krungman. Okay, because we just got to make sure we know how to pronounce oh, it. Oh, Krungman. First of all, we, Krungman. Somebody sent it to us one time. It's like a couple of years ago. We played in the car. We're like, this is great. This sounds like the music that Wu Tang is going to sample. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. That, I said it's Lauren incredible. Lauren just sat in with Wu Tang like yeah. a few months ago. This is yeah. like a few months ago. I mean, yeah. we're talking about this was like a couple, like that first album. And it was like, it. It, you know, it's cool. I hate to be like the douche, like a, like it was like a little band secret. Like you'll be sitting mm-hmm. watching TV. I'm like, is that them in a beer commercial? Yep, that's sure. Like you hear it, yeah. and you're like, yo, it's number three. It's starting. <laughs> like it's actually starting to work. And it's I just like, yo, I, lo- I love that. I love the album. Man, I I mean, I I love seeing my friends win. Yeah, like it, it really means a lot to me. And I know that for them, it means the same when I'm doing well. Mm. Um, because at the end of the day, all you want to do when you're at these festivals is hang out with your friends okay. that okay. are doing great and to That's keep awesome. doing that. Um, it doesn't always get to happen that way. We don't always, you know, vibe in that way. However, um, the suffers have looked back at a lot of the mistakes that happened on the last two releases. The first release I always say is the wild west release because <laughs> we did it ourselves yeah. and, uh-huh. uh, you know, it ended up doing well because we just did what we yeah, did. Yeah. However, yeah. Uh, the second record, when I look at most of the critics that came, um, and anybody that's heard our second record knows that there is no rapping on our record. Uh, uh, Paul is doing all the in- Paul Wall is doing all the interludes, and Bun uh, gave <laughs> gave us the distinct pleasure of having him sing on one of our uh interludes and because i was like you sound like isaac hayes to me i need you to sing on this and he's amazing and he does does. he's singing his wife queenie in the background and it's amazing and um black radio again treated the record with such love and appreciation and open arms and um a lot of our initial uh critics that loved our first record a lot of the white critics and folk and country folk they just didn't understand yeah. why we had the nerve <laughs> to write this neo soul trend music. Yeah, I said neo soul a trend in 2018. Okay, you are right. Whatever. Yeah. Um, but again, I had to accept the fact that my marketing budget was only so big for this record, mm. and only half of it was spent. And so with that Hell in the back yeah. of my pocket. You in the black, oh, baby. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. It was definitely not the best thing to have happened. But at the same time, it's like I know that the next time I release, we'll do it the right way or as close to as right as we think we're going to be. Um, but we've made it a purpose and a point to ask for help in every single way that we can when necessary mm-hmm. um, from the writing process to who we work with to who um, we ask for help from. And does that mean that everybody's going to tell me, yeah, no. Does that mean that everybody's going to tell me no? No. Um, I have some of my musical heroes that have stepped up to help write on this record and I'm so grateful for them and their contributions and um, their patience with me and my band and mm-hmm. our just fanaticness and my <laughs> spiritedness. My, free, you said free spirit. Uh, yeah. I would say, yeah, sure. Free <laughs> so, who are some of the writers that you've had that you collaborated with? Uh, so, so far, um, it's all over the place. So, um, Mark, we started working on a song with Tank and the Bangas. Uh, this yeah. guy, Binky Grip Tight, he used to play guitar for uh, Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings, and um. Amy Winehouse for a while, this guy, uh, Robert Ellis, who's a country artist from here, um, this girl, Maria Massa, and um, Steve Watkins, who played for this artist named Alan Stone. Um, who else? Like, it's just kind of all over the place. Um, a lot of folks that people know and don't realize, <laughs> and a lot of folks that they don't know yet at all. So the, the range of artists are from... Um, Big to small, to lo- you know, to local, to other side of the world. And That's so awesome. um, I feel like I just didn't want to have any limitations in that. Uh, we also have a lot of local artists. One thing that I really wanted to have more of on this record was just 
more black women and more okay. women of color, just more women everywhere. Um, because I personally had never had that on the previous records, mm -hmm. but um, for this work, um, I have definitely been orchestrating a lot yeah. and uh, going off to different places and just spending extended amounts of time in these cities to get these songs written with these people. So okay. it was nine days in New Orleans, nine days in Los, uh, Los Angeles, nine days. Uh, and I don't know why it kept being nine, but it was nine a lot. Uh, nine in okay. Austin. And when we started the beginning of the real writing process for the record, we were on this cruise called the Capital Jazz uh, Soul Cruise. Yeah. And it's that that was when I realized that black people had found us. I was like, oh, hey. On oh, the yeah. Soul Cruise. Soul Cruise. Soul cruise. Okay. Well, because we were the youngest group on the, on the boat, and the headliners were like Sheila E. and Gregory Porter and Babyface and yeah. Teddy Riley. And I'm like, this is why uh, a lot of black people think that we aren't in the realm because we're not being played on the radio. Mm -hmm. But black internet radio oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's plays us a lot. And yeah. I'm like, oh, they do listen to us. They That's are cool. finding us. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't know if it's just some weird dude in a room with a bunch of phones just playing the song. Wow. Because that's what it is sometimes. You didn't realize this by doing Kimmel or any of that, like the just. No, I mean, because for a long time our audiences were not; they weren't as mixed as they are now. Uh -huh. It wasn't until we made a work of art that was reflective of everybody's personality. I mean, it and makes sense because the show that we saw it was kind of Casper, but you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and the audience. Yeah, audience. but it's because. But you also it, have these things where I'm, you know. You're featured with a lot of rappers, yeah. too. Because Paul and Bun was there. So that's when I play a game called It Ain't Me. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, hey, hey, I'm still out here. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I just remember, like, like I said, my my biggest introduction, I said my favorite song is Rob Gillette and You. I think that's just an incredible mm -hmm. song. But it is a thing where it's like, and he's always like, Oh, Cam is great. Cam yeah. is great. And you would hear all these rappers like Cam, 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 Cam. And I'm like, you okay. So you would think, okay, when that transfer over to the suffers, like it's like, all right. So when we did our, our Welcome to Houston uh, collaboration with, uh, I believe it was nine rappers, mm -hmm. the rappers didn't know, aside from Bun and Paul and, um, uh, who was the other one? Willie. Okay. The rappers didn't know that we were our own band. Really? It had been communicated to some of them. And this is like after we've you know done Letterman, we're on our little wave. They don't know. They're in their own world. Yeah. The world doesn't know us. We're yeah. not expecting people to know who we are. However, it was communicated to, their, to them for some reason that we were their backing band. Ah. And so there came, <laughs> there were a lot of moments during this time uh, that occurred that in retrospect, I'm still very glad that I made the decisions that I made because it wouldn't have been a good look uh, in the long term. Um, I didn't allow cameras to come in. The people that were running uh, that festival uh, wanted to document it. Mm. And I said no to rehearsal recordings because none of them had sheet music. None of them knew what key their shit was in none of them had a team that was you know being very responsive except for a few and so i realized very early okay this is going to be fucking wrangle city yeah let me get a grip and so i talked to my band and i was like all right what's the most realistic we knew everybody's music so we laid out 25 songs and ended up cutting two of them because uh, just two of the guys just didn't want to do them and started learning them. I used to work in oil and gas years ago, but before I had my job job, I was an executive assistant for seven years. So I know how to get people organized. I know how to schedule, I know how to make, yeah. a, make a plan. So I send this insane email. It's insane. It's insane. <laughs> nice way to put that. It's insane. Yeah. But all red. <laughs> I need to hear from you or someone from your team by X date, or this is what song we're doing. There will be no changes. 
if I don't hear from you before this date. Mm -hmm. Three months. It's a good amount of time. Three months. I think it's a good amount of time. <laughs> then the week before, I sent another email. One more week. <laughs> no changes. 23 songs. Re put at the bottom. The show is happening on my birthday. I would like to enjoy it. Yeah. I'm sure you would like to enjoy it. Two of the managers didn't read my email. And then uh, we had a few moments mm. that I'm very glad were not recorded. And we Ooh. ended up having a great show. Okay. okay. Because I made it very clear early on in writing six times yeah. through my crazy email that I'm willing to learn whatever song you want to learn before this date. Before the date. Yeah. Yeah. But Don't you know what? Morning. You know what? We had a great show. I went to office, what was that, Office Max, Staples, got one of them giant ass poster, post it notes that stick, wrote out the set list eight times everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> I saw many people take credit for a lot of things that I did that week um, that me and my band did together. And mm. we didn't get a lot of the credit that we should have gotten from mm. that. Uh, no guidance. Uh, yeah. Y'all <laughs> took it upon yourselves. Um, but the rappers, were wonderful to work with and um i was so glad that we were able to deliver their music the way that we heard it however zero knows that i'm forever mad at him uh for not allowing me to do mo city dawn freestyle because i was ready damn i was ready <laughs> i was ready i was ready y'all we were ready he to go like, nah, it's not he's man. like you i think i conscience? think he said something like i want to do i hate you bitch and said or yeah. something i was like come on you got the congas uh, man we were ready. Yeah. We were ready, but it's okay. I mean, you know, that, that, that's it's okay. Yeah, Sometimes right. he might get tired of it. Like it's he's okay. like, "Come on, again, I, I got, mean, I got, the, I got." The, I the, set, the set itself was a dream. Yeah. And while a lot of them didn't know us before, they definitely got to know us afterward. Mm -hmm. And you know, I am so grateful for that because that's a moment that no one can ever really take uh, yeah. from us. Mm -hmm. And you know, anytime I get to work with a new rapper in Houston, except for a few of them who know who they are, um, <laughs> it's always a wonderful opportunity. You can drop for some me. names. Nah, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> They'd love I that. Want to see. They I would. Want to they see. would love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, 2020 um, should be filled with some gems. I'm excited. It's always a new experience for me. Anytime I get to perform with anybody. Um, but w especially when it's somebody that I love and respect or, yeah. or an artist that I've been wanting to work with for a while, um, it's, it's awesome. Um, I think the most recent one has been with, uh, DeLorean. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, cause Coachella. So it's like, <laughs> oh, it's like this, I feel like this for me and my friends. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then Paul has one with me that he's been sitting on forever. So I'm hoping that he'll drop it eventually. Cause I'm yeah. just like, come on, please. <laughs> but that's what happens if you make something that's timeless it doesn't matter when it comes yeah, out that's, that's true. true it'll drop it that's and that's so true. crazy yeah that's like we, we get so much pressure on us and we're like if you just make it to where you ain't trying to be in any genre any year yeah. i like to think like all my music's like 2023 or 1984 like what i feel that's it. the that's the goal what year is it what year is it i don't yeah. know it could be 1964. <laughs> Your music's timeless. Thank you. Um, the next record, I think, is going to have a little mix of everything. So we'll hear. We'll hear all. I mean, they're always everything on there. But um, we just put a little more care into some stuff this time around. And so I'm excited for people to just get to know this new version of us. Okay. What's the new album going to be called? Who knows? All right. Who knows? Well, yeah. When's it we're, come we're out? Going, we're going very quickly, but at the same time, we're taking our time. It's, I know it's a very, like... Uh, like Yogi Bear thing to say, but it's, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's how that's what it is. So we don't know what the new record. We don't is know. Called what it, yet. We don't know what's called. We don't, we don't know, know what's coming, coming out. out. I have a feeling it will be this year. Okay. Okay. Like it's going pretty. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. Yeah. But if it comes out next year, it is just what know it is. That, it is what it is. Just know that we were just marinating. Yeah. That's okay. it. We cook it. Okay. Now, what else do uh, we have in the works? Because, I mean, you also do... Uh, I do a lot of things. Yes. <laughs> you do a yeah, lot of things. Sure so, do. besides... Because um, I don't even mind if the album comes out next year. Cause <laughs> it make Like, you got... Y'all have busy schedules. We do so, have very busy schedules. Yes. Um. So, I... Oof. Where do I start? Um. Oh, one project I'm really excited about. I just got awarded... Um, 
a, a grant by the city of Houston Art Alliance um, to create a chorus, which I'm calling the Houston, uh, excuse me, I'm calling it the Bayou City Comeback Chorus, okay. where I encourage former singers, retired singers, people that can sing that maybe are, you know, that's just not what they do uh, for a living or it's not what they do anymore. Uh, just an evening opportunity to come do a live recording, get a credit so that if that's what you want to do again, maybe later, uh, boom, you already have a resume item for that's yourself. That's awesome. Um, and so that's going to occur later on this year. Um, I have a lot going on during, uh, what is that, St. Patrick's Day week and mm -hmm. South by Southwest music. So I'm doing a live solo performance slash interactive songwriter uh kind of like a VH1 storyteller kind yeah. of situation oh, okay. um, that Texas Monthly's put together. That's happening there. Um, I'm doing two super jams, one in Austin, one in Houston. The last one I did in Houston um, got a lot of press for having no real invitee list and not technically actually existing. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I did this experiment. I got really stoned and I wanted to see if it would work where <laughs> I just invited like 75 friends and one of their friends to just come and jam with me yeah. i didn't send any reminders i didn't send up any i didn't put anything up i the day before i invited a few members of the press and the day of i invited some photographers and it was packed uh the talent was insane nice. i invited more women than anything mm -hmm. so you had all these female players that you might see one of at a jam, just kind of like that Spider-Man meme, like just yeah. what? Yeah. Oh my God. We're all here. We're all here, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah. Where was this? Um, at, it was at the foundation room. Oh no, Hospitals. I saw it. Okay, the Rochelle Gemini. Oh and yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, it has a bunch of different names. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying I saw it, cause I was like, what was this? Yeah. Like, oh, I said, we didn't know anything about this. I no, know, no one covered. did, no, I'm yeah. sorry. So the next one is actually gonna be, um, March 18th in March Houston 18th. Okay. at the Foundation Room. And All then right. the one before it, it's only going to be uh, 21 and up, unfortunately. Uh, the one before <laughs> that <laughs> is uh, <laughs> in Austin with uh, this group called Vapor Caves at uh, Vapor Empire Caves, yeah. Control Room. They're fantastic if you haven't heard of them. Yeah. They're one of our co-writers on the next record okay. as well. Um, yeah, I'm all over the place. That's good, and though. So... Um, and then that Thursday, have I got the Thursday yet? Yes. Uh, well, the whole week, National Geographic's going to be down in Texas filming a documentary on the state. And so they're, they've selected me as one of the subjects they want to follow in Houston. Golly. And so they're, they're going to follow me to some spots. And um, we're going to do a little pop up uh, with the band that week. And uh -oh. then. Um, it, I'll have to invite y'all because that one, unfortunately, is not going to be a public show. Oh, yeah, it's a pop-up. You can't even say yeah, it right now. We can't. Now. We yeah, can't. Not yeah, on this, unfortunately. Yeah, you can't even say it. They're going to be like, no, why yeah, you say that? Yeah, that's, um, that's in the contract. And then there is no contract for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then um, the rest of the year is mainly focused on touring. We're going back to Europe uh, at the end of August. Okay. And then... Just a lot of touring and a lot new new spaces. Um, it's it's funny you were talking about uh, just me being so pro black. Um, I have tried to make sure that it's reflected not only in the way that I I speak and the way that I immerse myself, but also in the places that I go to. Mm -hmm. um, I know that the United States is filled with amazing people everywhere. However, I know that I'm going to have a much better chance of playing in front of people that look like me yeah. when I go to towns that actually have demographics that exist like that. Yes. And so um, I told my team last year, you know, I want to go. I want us to play more in Atlanta. I want us to go to Mississippi. I want us to go to Little Rock. I want us to go to Florida. And I know it's going to be different and it's going to be tough. However, if we put all this time into going to Idaho, into going to Portland, <laughs> into going to Washington, Salt Lake City, yeah. Salt Lake City yeah. and, that, and our fans and all these places are amazing, I just want to make sure that I'm giving the same amount of attention to these regions that haven't gotten that opportunity. Yeah. And in my mind... 
I know that it doesn't make sense to go to these new towns until I've built up. But if I'm playing the baby room in these places, a girl can build up. Yeah, It's harder. Yeah. And so this whole year has been quite a reset for us um, between getting a new team last year, uh, realizing, dang, our last record didn't do as well as we wanted it to do. What are the things that we can do better? Mm-hmm. Um, because it's one thing that we appealed to a new market, mm-hmm. but it's like if you're losing one market and not c- consistently keeping them, that's not the same as saying, oh, this record was bad, that record was good, because yeah. that's not what happened. It's the way that it was marketed. And so I want to make sure that we are focusing on putting out a product that sells itself rather than just doing any old thing and then just trusting them to market it, you know, to folks. Cause it's like, you gotta have it both, you know? And so I know that we can always, again, stand to just do a better job. And so that's where our focus is right now. It's just good. doing better. Gotta look at the analytics. Shit. <laughs> yeah. But not too much. Yeah, not too much. I mean, Wasn't that your job at, at a point? Huh? Wasn't that your job? Yeah. yeah. Music at, analytics yeah. is way more interesting to me. Okay. Yeah, I got to redeem myself for this question. I was like, "Well, how did it Katrina?" No, I meant Harvey. I was <laughs> wondering. Yeah. I was wondering. You tried. Oh, like, yo, Harvey was yo insane. <laughs> it was insane. It would. I didn't realize that it created a uh, a thing. Like I, I didn't know that I was freaking out after I went onto my first tour about my car. Every mm. time it was raining at home, I was like, is my shit going to get flooded? Like, blah, blah. Uh, And it didn't hit me until afterwards because nothing happened to my car during yeah. car during Harvey. But once I started going on the road, it created this like thing in me where I was like, my car is not high enough. Like, uh. And so I just sold my car to get rid of it. Like I was like, I don't need. And then I was like, wait, should I have done that? Yes, I feel better. Free. <laughs> I felt free, but um, it broke my heart. You know, there's so many people that were affected in such crazy ways that I knew personally, but I feel like everybody in Houston knew yeah. somebody that was affected directly. Um, I'm so grateful that I personally didn't have to deal with that. Um, however, you have a lot of um, survivor's guilt that comes with that. Mm. And it was also a very weird time for us financially as a group because we had missed a gig that was like a pretty big paying gig for us. And we had a big meeting before we left uh, to go on the road to to just say, you know what, we're not gonna do this because the storm is looking way bigger than they're saying it is right now and it looks like it's gonna get worse. Yeah. The last thing we wanted to do was leave everybody's wife at home and with us being stuck in Richmond, Virginia. And uh, luckily an opportunity came along for us to write a jingle for Kit Kat. You sure and did. I wrote it that day (laughs) (laughs) choppy my percussion player had a baby the night that the storm came and so when i saw what happened uh not what happened when i saw this opportunity come in i had about 12 hours to write Mm -hmm. the idea and so i went over to his house he knew how he said he had logic and i had played with it once and so he's like, if you want to come over, you can try to get it. I was like, Choppy, I can do this. And he's like, <laughs> okay, girl. And so I wrote this idea, and I was just like, can you just add these drums for me? Because I didn't know how to do the drums and logic yeah. yet. And um, got done with it that night, and I was like, I'm going to send it. I'm gonna just send it. I, I was like, this is tight. This is tight, right? And he's like, He's like, I don't fucking, I'm tired, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. and he has a newborn, and, he's like, yeah, and he has all these baby. people. Yeah. All these people are coming to his house. All day long. Yeah. Like, What's going on I'm in man? his like, den. We're writing for Kit Kat. On yeah. this laptop in the back a, room. A hurricane about, just happened. There's a baby. There's a lot. <laughs> and you did it. They're like, what's she doing over there? She's like, I did it. And, you know, I was I was just like, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because the bottom line was going to be fucked, you know. But yeah. at the same time, um, it was one of those moments where I was like, this is God being like chill. Yeah. This yeah. is God being like, calm down. Yeah. It's fine. Do the work. And so now I'm at home these days, very immersed in logic, <laughs> very immersed in making my own um, uh-huh. everything, my own compositions, my own music, uh, 
when I have an ounce of free time, I'm working on my solo record and, uh, you know, just enjoying it and having a really good time doing That's it. That's good. And, you know, a solo yeah. record coming out too? I have multiple projects that I'm oh, working okay. on. So outside and you're producing, of, you're making beats Yeah. Too? <laughs> I have The Steppers. <laughs> I have my record. I have Casino Mezzo with Lisa Harris, mm-hmm. this opera singer. And then um, I have this new project that I just two days ago agreed to do with Jackie Benson. And then I have another project that I'm working on, but I can't talk about it yet because it's going to be really tight. You're going to do a country record? Oh, definitely. I think. All right. Yeah, I mean, because I can. And so, I mean. And you like country. (laughs) Most black people love country. America, beyond that bullshit and that limited mind. You go to the Caribbean once, Anybody that's actually been to real, real like Jamaica, St. Lucia, yeah, they no. sing in country karaoke yeah. along with Rihanna. I'm carrying your love yeah, with but, me. Yeah, but with that with the accent. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and and when I started listening to um, this other podcast, the it was the the Dolly Parton's America yeah. podcast, they started talking about how a lot of the folk singers in uh, Africa grew up listening to her being played on the radio and yeah, other country artists vocals. and i'm i'm just like is this texas like how did this get to me like i don't even know but i don't know very many black people in the united states outside not in the united states very many black people in houston that love country the way that i do mm-hmm. and it's only because i think i haven't met them but when i go to nashville i got homies that are you know they're in the thick of it um, there's this group right now called the War and Treaty, which every time I mention them, black people, they're like, I remember. I was like, have you seen Sister Act 2? And they're like, yeah. I said, Tanya uh, Trotter, one of the singers for the War and Treaty, who back then was called Tanya Blount, is the other girl singing his eyes on the sparrow with Lauren mm. Hill. I said, you've heard her voice. Oh. But when I talked to her, she's like, man, she's like, most, most black people, she's like, they're finding us now. But... At first, she said a lot of people thought she was dead because she, I think she said something about the shade room, putting that she was dead, and and it hurt her feeling so bad. And I was just like, I could, I can't believe that. But we forget these people are real human beings. Yes. And so now it went from oh, I ain't heard of them, I ain't heard of them to they were part of the Grammy tribute that like weird big ass thing that dude when that was retiring. They yeah. came out during that the black couple that came out singing yeah. and crushing it. That was my friends, and now they about to go open for John Legend. Okay. And so I'm like. I can't be worried about y'all. <laughs> same shit happened with John Legend when he came out. Yeah. True. Wasn't no people loving everything until after Ordinary People came out. Yeah. That's true. That's when I found him. I mean, you just got to keep going. Trust and have faith in God. And that's what you're, or the universe, whatever you decide. Uh, that's when you keep going. I'm down with G-O-D. Yeah. <laughs> that was a sister act reference, y'all. You down with G-O-D? Yeah, you know me. You down with G-O-D? Yeah, you know me. That was awesome. I can't find it online anywhere, so if you can find that, let me know. <laughs> really? You can't find that the, online? The soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Hard, it's difficult to find. It's difficult to find anything. Well, not anything, but that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's like, it's just difficult. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I was to say, it's a lot. It's great. It's easy to find yeah. everything online. Yeah. And Except that's how for, we like, did our the research. one stuff you did. Yeah, that's I know. You're right. But You're I right. love that y'all did research. I've done podcasts sometimes where it hasn't happened, so it's always cool when y'all do that. I like to read that way we could talk about something. You like to read, to yeah. talk about something. I'm like, look you at the video. I, mean? I, I give the secret. I always tell people, watch the videos, read the comments. Don't tell people our secret. Other po- No, I'm just messing yeah, Don't read the comments. I read all the comments, and I press buttons. They'd be like, that's my sister. Then I'll look at that person's page. That he really page. does. I read Because it'll be like, oh, oh and Cause he'll literally be on there, and then this person will be like, "Yo, you know my my uncle. He's like your uncle friend commented on the page like four years ago." But the then first, you'll be like, yeah. "Your uncle's friend sings for yeah. the Commodores or something." Like. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, oh, wow. yeah. that's how I found that's out random. a lot of yeah. That's how I found Chad Black. That's how I found him. He goes, he gonna punch me. Hi, Chad. Yeah, <laughs> I love okay. him to death. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's been in my humble opinion. I really want to thank you for coming. I'm like, happy to be here. I'm happy that you came. You gave us a great episode. <laughs> Thank I you love very it. much. Thank you love for, for giving us your time because I know you're extremely busy. Like, extremely. Well, right now I'm just extremely hungry. So, <laughs> as am I. So, hey, we're just going to get out of here. I'm it's like, been a. Ooh. 
another In My Humble Opinion podcast. I've been your host, Carlton Banks. We have our co-host over there, Jess Devon. Boom. Yeah, Jess Devon. Jess Devon. I love it. Okay. We got to add some bravado. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> We've been here with Cam Franklin of the Sufferers. Yes, In My Humble Opinion podcast. Yeah, yeah. In my humble opinion podcast, just know that somebody wants to listen to you. If you are going through anything, just talk to your friends. Mental health is a really big deal, and people do care. So don't think that nobody cares about you. In my humble opinion, where the opinions aren't humbled and the words aren't jumbled. Good night. Goodbye. All right. Bang.